I know you've heard the horror stories about prospecting for a motorcycle club from drinking piss to getting dragged by motorcycles. Many fear or don't understand why someone would put themselves through this to join a motorcycle club. I'm gonna show you eight things you should know about prospecting for an MC. Let's get into it. Number one, if you ask when you will be fully patched, they will add time. If you're prospecting for a motorcycle club, never ask your sponsor or your president when you will be fully patched. In a traditional MC, they will not tell you, but they will tack on extra months to your prospect phase. Or when you come up for a vote, certain club members will vote against you. Be patient. Now, some clubs will fully patch you in seconds. There are clubs out here that are so thirsty for numbers, they'll put a patch on anybody so they can get those dudes running every month. A good way to know if you're in a solid club is how fast they fully patch people. That will show you what that club is all about. Growth is a great thing, but anything that happens too fast, it's always a shit show. Number two, club events will not be fun for you. If you're prospecting for a motorcycle club and you're going to an annual event, or to a clubhouse understand you will not be having fun you're either going to be working the bar or playing security for the girls that are working the bar cleaning up messes handling food or drinks going to the store to get ice or drinks or whatever's needed a cheat code that we used to do with all our prospects so they don't get scattered all around an event is we will put them on security detail for the vice president and let him shadow the vp like he's doing security for the VP. So this way brothers don't, you know, pull them all over the annual. Sometimes they'll argue about that. Why do you need the security for an actual brother in our own event? You know, sometimes it causes issues, but it is a cheat code. So go in there with the mindset, I'll party when I'm fully patched. Number three, don't compare yourself to other prospects. When you're prospecting for an MC, never compare yourself to other prospects. Everybody's story is different. I've seen prospects go way harder than another and they get fully patched before them. And that's because of who referred them, how high up on the food chain they were, who they're related to. There's a lot of politics when it comes into that. Also, if you're a member that you've never been in the club before, you know nothing about the culture. So if there's another prospect that he came from a motorcycle club and he was in that club for years, he has a lot of experience. So he has a basic knowledge of the culture so he is more ready to be a fully patched member. But it's not like a make you wait punishment type thing. It's about learning about the club. How can you walk around fully patched like I'm this and you don't know anything about the club? So that's what it really is. It's not about hazing. It's not about putting you down and making you lesser. It's preparing you to be a fully patched member out on these roads. Because once you're fully patched, there's no excuses. There's no, I didn't know. You prospect until you know. Number four. Don't start acting like a fully patched member. I remember a time where I was a sergeant of arms and the VP and another officer proceeded to bring in multiple numbers of prospects and even a hang around to basically put the president on trial. Like they were trying to have a little mock trial. I didn't realize it at first, but as soon as I realized that they kept lining people up, I shut that shit down. Until you're a fully patched member, your voice does not count. I remember a sponsor, a fully patched member who was in charge of all the prospects, was giving the prospects some heat and then he was getting on a hangaround. Now the hangaround proceeded to come to the table and tell everybody that it wasn't true what the brother was saying. So to teach everyone a lesson, I made an example out of him. I said, let me ask you a question very calmly. So he said, yeah, he was thinking I was going to go along with it. I said, are you saying that my brother is a fucking liar. And he looked at me confused. Oh no, that's 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 not what I'm saying. I said, I'm gonna ask you one more time. Simple question. You just said that what he said is false. So I'm asking you, did you just say that my brother is a fucking liar? So I told him, don't you ever disrespect this table and come to this table like you earned the right 
to speak at this table. Now go outside because we need to talk. Now, normally I don't treat brothers like that, but I wanted everybody to know, listen, if you earn that fully patch, that's a respected position. Don't come in here and say my brother's a liar. Number five, sometimes you got to stand your ground. Now on the flip side, when you're prospecting for an MC, sometimes you got to hold your ground. And I mean with your own brothers. One time we're at an annual party and we're in another state. I think it was in Rhode Island. And a fully patched member from another chapter was drunk and acting a fool, stumbling around a disgrace. So he bumps into one of the prospects from my chapter. Now the prospect was like, you okay? Trying to hold them up because he's stumbling. The dude proceeds to start taking the prospect's vest off. Like, oh, you're not built like that. And so I intervened, I stopped it and I said, listen, he's in our chapter. You don't have the right to touch his vest. You come to me, I'm the Sergeant of Arms of the chapter. You come to me if you have a problem with it. And if I see fit, then I can take his vest. But you can't take his vest off him. So he's like, no disrespect or whatever. He knows he's drunk. And he's out of pocket. So I pulled the prospect to the side and I'm like, listen, don't ever let someone take your vest off. And I know he thought it was a fully patched member and he had the right, but sometimes you gotta stand your ground. Number six, being sent on missions. If you're a prospect for a motorcycle club, you will be sent on missions. It could be as small as picking up stuff from the store to infiltrating a rival motorcycle club. One of the biggest clubs in the world is notorious for this. I've seen situations where a brother will prospect for your club, be in there for a year, get fully patched, out of nowhere, no issues going on, nothing, out of nowhere, he's out the club, he needs whatever time, and a couple of months later, he's fully patched for that big club, and that club does not let anyone in easy like that. My man, he infiltrated your club. So they know everything that was said, they know where you stand, they know how you feel about them, all because you let that man in. So the most important thing, if you say something, be able to stand on it and be able to say it in that person's face because there's a possibility that someone will tell them what you said. Number seven, shadowing enforcers. If you're a prospect, sometimes you will be asked to shadow a sergeant of arms or an enforcer during confrontations or disputes. This is where you show them where you are. This is how you show that you're built for this this is where you let your nuts hang, but don't be something you're not. And I don't care what anyone tells you. I'm gonna tell you this from the heart. If you're not built like that, tell people. They'll give you shit for it. They'll give you a hard time, but guess what? It's better to tell them who you truly are than have every boot in that club shoved in your mouth. And many will say, do it even if you're not built like that. No, I disagree. Let them know who you are. Number eight, facing the final test. If you're prospecting for a motorcycle club and you did everything you're supposed to do and they deem you fit to be a fully patched member, some will face the final test. It could be as simple as some small fun challenge or it could be something where you live in Chicago, you're in a Nomad Charter, they tell you ride your bike to New York. If you get here in 14 hours, you'll be fully patched. If not, you get sent home empty handed. If you do the math, it's a 12 to 13 hour trip. So if you get a call and it's eight at night, if you leave right that second, you could be there in the morning at eight or nine. Or it could be something where you walk the line and you get massive licks, everyone hits you. I've seen ones where the biggest dude you have ever seen is holding an ax handle and you gotta get that ax handle out his hands to get fully patched. There's many things that motorcycle clubs come up with let me know in the comments the craziest ones you've ever heard. I got another video where I talk about the eight motorcycle club members you will meet. It'll be linked above. And thank you for tuning in to Demons Road TV, the holy grail of MC culture. Like, subscribe, and comment. And oh yeah, we ghosting, baby.